Okay, so Christians that um, lied about being into Satanism, witchcraft, that never were. Number six, uh, the one that stars in most of the Jeremiah films, Dave Hunt, Carol Matriciana. I just found out Carol Matriciana passed away last year. Didn't know that because I've been out of it so long. But anywho, Johanna Michelson. Johanna Michelson, former yoga teacher and assistant to a psychic surgeon, tells of her experiences in the occult in her autobiography, The Beautiful Side of Evil. Another word for mantra is charm, or to cast a spell, if you will. And in mantra yoga, a word or a phrase or the name of a, a demon god is repeated over and over and over again to bring the individual to a vibration level that will attract that which is being chanted for, to bring about the desired effect. It's exactly what the white witches and magicians, so-called, use in the casting of their spells. From human sacrifices to sexual perversion and sorcery. Tantra yoga is the extreme expression of Hinduism. If you will, it's the black and so-called white magic in which the Shakti, the Kundalini force, is aroused the psychic powers that accompany it are in full bloom and the individual, depending on his personal preference, can channel this force either into the black magic, which includes rites of meditating upon severed heads, human heads in India, and eating bits of flesh and the unconsumed parts of uh, the cremation rites and other practices horrifying practices, or they can take it into what they call the white magic part of it, in which they are using this power, this force, for healing, for the benefit of mankind, if you will. Yet Anton LaVey, the Pope of the First Church of Satan, has said it very explicitly. He said that to believe there's any such thing as white magic is mythology. There is no such thing as white magic. All of it has its source in occult psychic power, and it has nothing whatever to do with, the, with God. Johanna Michelson is or was one of the movers and shakers behind the satanic panic trend that was all the rage among parents, fundies and the delusional in the 80s and early 90s. Indeed, the former Satanists who achieved something resembling super stardom, in particular religious, in certain religious communities, in particular Lauren Stratford, who I've only just found about out about, I didn't know who she was before this, could hardly have got there without Michelson. Michelson, who was herself a former New Ager, who after being reborn, devoted her life to fight all things New Age and all non-traditional religions for all the wrong reasons. And she seems to have cared not one whit about the utter lack of plausibility or corroboration with regard to her ex-Satanist clients. Michelson has in fact spread a fair share of paranoid crap herself about the paranormal New Age silliness and Halloween herself. She has claimed that school shootings should be blamed on teenagers toying with the occult and rock music, blaming in particular Ramstein for the Columbine, Columbine massacre. You hate me. To us to make. And warn that Satanists are grooming our children for a reign of terror in the immediate future by brainwashing them with Halloween. Sounds plausible. <laughs> Her book, Like Labs to Slaughter, is hence a guide for parents telling them how to prevent the occult from encroaching on their children's souls, such as warning against letting kids watch the Smurfs. Those evil blue <laughs> satanic little monkeys. They're blue because they're actually dead. <laughs> they must be living zombies. That's the one. See, I've got it sorted. Yeah, whatever. John Beardsley of RapidNet.com liked it, but was critical of Michelson's sometimes acceptance of terminology from psychology and psychiatry which, in Beardsley's view, is unbiblical. Most of the megachurches believe that psychology and psychiatry are of the devil and that 
Jesus Christ should be the one setting you free, not this nonsense of Freud and fraud and <laughs> all that. Anywho, you can read a longer expose of Michelson and her antics here. I'll do that after I've done this. As mentioned, Michelson never really rejected her previous New Age beliefs. Indeed, she explicitly still claims the stuff she professed early on were correct, only that she had been deceived by Satan into thinking them innocent or even angelic rather than demonic. The stuff in question includes occult practices such as yoga, meditation, as well as influencing others through psi. I always thought there was chi, chi, and summoning Jesus and other dead people during sessions. Michelson was a close associate of Hal Lindsay, indeed, Johanna's. I don't know why I always use Johanna, her real name's Joanna, but I was, I don't know, I was taught it was Johanna as a kid. Johanna's younger sister, Kim, was Hal Lindsay's third wife. Johanna herself was married to Randolph Randy Michelson, current Lee, pastor of Kings Harbour Church in Torrance. No relation to Jack Torrance, of course. Lindsay even wrote her... F Lindsay even wrote the forward for Joanna's first book, The Beautiful Side of Evil, which documented her occult experiences and subsequent lapse into fundamentalist Christianity. Due to her background and connections, she was thus well poised to launch her significant contribution to the satanic panic by mentoring Lauren Stratford. Michelson lost some of her clout when she fell out with Lindsay in the early 90s, Stratford and on her side, and after her story was exposed as fake, went on to change her name and start a new career as a fake Holocaust survivor. Is that Stratford or Michelson? I don't know. Don't care. Really didn't end very well for her. Diagnosis, utterly unhingeable, raving mad, and exasperatingly, she has demonstrably had a bit of influence. Should make you weep for mankind or something. I have to say on a personal note, after debunking or reading these, people who have debunked them and, and researched uh, how wrong they were, I now have to publicly state that I know absolutely nothing about Hinduism now, that everything I was taught about the religion of Hinduism was a lie. So who knows what they believe in? Who knows what they practice? Who knows how they practice? I don't. I used to think because I was watching Gods of the New Age, Revival of Evil and Halloween, uh, whatever it was, the you know, the whole cult series that they did, um, I used to believe I was the expert on Hinduism and would tell everyone I knew about the dangers of Hinduism. And now I can honestly say I know absolutely nothing and I no longer believe every, anything that I was taught about any religion outside of the Christian church because I can't trust the information about different religions that I was taught because it could all be wrong. It could all be wrong. And we go back to the the stupid one about there being werewolves in the upper hierarchy of the Mormon church. It's all lies. It's all wrong. So what can you believe anymore? What what source material can you read to get the truth about religions? Jeepers, what a mess. <laughs> right, let's move on. Right, yo, let's move on to number seven. It was going to be Irene Arrington Park because I've still got her book, but I've never read the book, so never really went into learning what she lied about. But I'm going to replace her with this dude that I found out about last night. Uh, his name's Dr. Henry Lewis, and he is more idiotic than any of these, any of the other ex-Satan, apart from Bill Schnivlin, Shivlin, he's the lunatic of the bunch, makes up so much garbage that he just, he sums up the whole mentality 
of all 20, 30, however many there are overall of these so-called ex-Satanists so-called ex-Satanists that never were Satanists in the first place and I'm gonna, I'm gonna play the clips that I found last night it's Crazy Christians number one, two and three and I'm gonna play clips from them and then I'm just gonna sit there and debunk his absolute nonsense there's there's no way there's no need to prove that he was never a Satanist because he claims he was the head of all witches in all of America like Doreen Irvine was the head of all the witches in Europe so their stories are so outrageous having no evidence whatsoever is stupid enough but what they pick on will just shock you Guitar Hero is evil Minecraft is evil this, this guy's a lunatic. Like I said, um, this, this, some of these guys are clearly mentally ill and why they have missions, ministries, I have no idea. Well, I will. I will tell you um, when I sum this up at the end why I believe that. So let's go with this guy. Someone called and said, is Pokemon demonic? The answer to that is yes, they are all oriental demons. Yeah. And as you read in the Pokemon, in order for Pokemon to advance in power... Provide evidence, please. It has to evolve to another level. And each you know, evolution, he becomes more demonic in appearance. And eventually he gets to a point where he's totally demonic. And these are all oriental demons the names are actually names of demons don't be stupid they are not they're made up by a corporation and they've all been all have copyrights on their names <laughs> oh my gosh hey how, how how to not do any research whatsoever now the more powerful the pokemon advance the more HP points they get and the more they're able to defeat the other Pokemon in the game. It's a game. Nothing more. There's no... See, see the, the, the thinking... This is really stupid. The thinking is that maybe in real life they could find these Pokemon in the forests and train them so that they could be drawn into witchcraft by having real life Pokemon which teach the children the teachings of the occult it doesn't matter it doesn't matter it's not supposed to make sense the, the stuff you're you're like a zombie when you're in these cults like the one I grew up in um you're not supposed to question the teachings so Wow, it's gone blue. <laughs> Anywho. I tell you all, be careful what you let your kids have, what you let them listen to. Isn't there a guitar that's called Something Hero? Yeah, that's a new uh, thing that they're coming out and the kids are getting really addicted to it. Uh, there's a, another game out that we just recently found out. Very addicting is Minecraft. Minecraft! I've played it once. We had to step in I was so addicted that I got bored with it. I, don't, I, I, I watched my mates play it, but I never really got into it myself. I just didn't get to understand the gist of it. I prefer like SimCity. I, I'm into the older games anyway. I prefer the SimCities and theme park and stuff. Okay, so here's the one on the Smurfs, My Little Pony, and Pokemon. I'm not sure if this caller is legit or he's just trolling this TV show. We just got a call from Miami. He's watching us on the computer. And um, I want to know, is My Little Pony a satanic cartoon? Must be. 
one of the greatest witch, witches in the nation is coming on this station and he's going to tell what they used to do and I will find out from him too about this little pony thing because I, I kind of think it is but I'm not sure. If you're running a TV program, this is regarding Gail Ripplinger as well, if you're on a television program, shouldn't you research whether the person you're bringing on your show is a compulsive liar or not? Shouldn't you be asking for proof of anything that he says to back it up? Especially if it's on a Christian television station. And I will find out from him too about this little pony thing. Because there's that little law about thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not tell fibs, thou shalt not be a Christian con artist preaching this rubbish just to get money. If you don't know what Smurfs are, they're not that cute little cuddly thing. They are satanic, they do satanic uh, pentagrams, Smurf sheets, Smurf covers, Smurf curtains, Smurf everything. They took out and they burned those Smurf things. God, I, I better, oh no, I've got to go and burn my Star Wars pajamas now. Oh dear. By the way, this crap is still going. I found out last night that there's some dude on YouTube now attacking the um, Avengers Infinity Wars, saying it's all evil and demonic. And I, I, I guess nowadays Ant-Man and Wasp are, are demonic and the next Superman movie is going to be demonic and the next Batman, yada, yada, yada. Everything in the future is going to be evil. So you can't stop this conspiracy train. This gibberish, nonsensical, lunatic conspiracy train. Every time a new book on Harry Potter comes out, the witches have to hire somebody to handle all the phone calls from the young people. That quote is ripped off straight from Stephen Dolans, who also I'll be doing... Um, specifically in the dedicated Harry Potter one that I make. Um, I also want to point out that whenever a Harry Potter book came out, the sales of cauldrons just <laughs> went through the sky. The, the sales of broomsticks just absolutely hit the roof. And <laughs> just stupid. Thousands of young people will want to become a witch. They're all coming under the lie of witchcraft. They're giving themselves to the devil 100%. It's not something to laugh at. This is how strong the occultic influence is mm. in America. Please provide names of all the children that left Christianity and joined witchcraftism. <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. In the very first book, he's a poor boy. He has no mother and no father. He lives in a closet. See, that's why The Horse and His Boy by C.S. Lewis is also demonic, because that boy grew up with an abusive father that treated him like crap and hardly fed him. Um, I, I just want to point out, this, this isn't true at all, but it's almost the same analogy. Harry Potter comes out of the closet. <laughs> I just figured that one out. Oh god, that that's I love that that metaphor. He comes out of the closet and gets set free. It's like coming out of the closet of being in the cult that believes this crap and being set free. So I'm now out of the closet of believing conspiracy theories that were never true in any way shape or form. His aunt and his uncle and his cousin hates him. Nobody knows him. He has no birthday, no holidays, nothing to be happy about. Probably because his aunt and his uncle and his cousin are Christians and they go to a, a nice, easy Methodist church and don't believe in this witchcraft nonsense. Well, he says it, doesn't he? Uncle Vernon, there's no such thing as witchcraft, even though he knows it, it exists. Ding! Until he turns 11, and then a giant shows up, and he takes Harry away, and he takes him to the Society of Witches, to a school called Hogwarts. Hogwarts. Now, I, it's my opinion that Hogwarts 
is a school set up in absolute re rebellion against Hogwarts. So you can go into Slytherin, or you can go one step deeper into the occult by joining Hogwarts. What the hell is Hogwarts? <laughs> Where everybody knows Harry, because Harry is famous among the witches, and he's also wealthy. Overnight, Harry goes from being a nobody to being the most famous person in his society. Llegó a ser el más famoso en su sociedad. Not because of Jesus, because of witchcraft. Okay, this is where he makes up his whole childhood backstory, totally fictitious in every way, shape, or form. I came you from came from a, a background, seven generations of witchcraft. Yes. And we were much more dangerous because we were organized and we had a purpose, and the purpose was to take control of the governments of the world. How, how do you reach the most arrogant, most powerful male witch of America? Which was you. me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's the most powerful witch of America. So therefore, Bill Snivlin, Mike Wonky, John Todd, Doreen Irvine, Alistair Crowley. <laughs> Don't know why I keep bringing a real one into it. But um, they all had to answer to this guy. He was the head of them all. Yes. How do you do that? I come from seven generations of witchcraft. Yo vengo de siete generaciones de brujería. At one time I was a leading male witch of America. I sat on the council to put the plans together to take this country over. They want your country. They're not happy that they're witches. They want your children. They're out to get your children. Poder and tener a tus hijos. If they get your children, y si toman a tus hijos, then your children will be destined to a devil's hell. This is not a game. There is a secret society that has been working for centuries, not to take over just America, but to take over the world. The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. Of course! I, ha I have one I think is pretty important here. Uh, this comes from Seth. He wants to, can Star Wars figures be demonic? <laughs> can Star Wars figures be demonic? Yes, they can. Um, you're going to have to go, excuse me for about half an hour, I'm going to have to go and burn all my Star Wars figures, all my Smurf figures, all my Star Wars posters, t-shirts, pajamas, uh, coffee cups, everything I got Star Wars on, because it's demonic and it's, that's the reason why when I walk into the spare room with my Star Wars collection, um, first of all you've got to get through all the poltergeists, that are, that are spinning and swirling around in the room, like uh, Poltergeist the movie, of course, yeah, sorry, um, dump, uh, to get to, to my Star Wars figures. Nonsense! And the Smurf can be the model. Oh, yes. If you look at the face of Papa Smurf, you'll see Stalin. And if you look at the face of the Smurf that's his right-hand man, you'll see the face of Stalin's right-hand man. And they were banned from France because they were created to promote communism. <laughs> That's like saying um, Asterix and Obelix was banned from France. <laughs> it's, it's, it's stupid. Or Tintin. <laughs> and don't they do pentagrams? They do magic of all kinds. Now Star Wars figures was all based upon the Force being one with the universe. Well, that's what Hinduism teaches you. So they teach you, be one with the force, and the power will be within you, okay? Can it be demonic? Yes. There's a lot of things. Uh, Pokemon is all based upon Japanese demons. So he's changed it from Oriental demons to Japanese demons. Maybe somebody's pointed out the fact that Oriental was kind of a racist word, or maybe, no, he hasn't done any research, <laughs> and he nearly tricked me, nearly. And in order for the character to get more power, to uh, go to the next grade of evolution, it has to be more wicked. And then when it gets to the final stage, they have to rescue it to bring it from that evil being back to being a good spirit. Okay, I have a I have a top ten list of, of um 
I have a separate top 10 list of things that I've given a special name to. Um, I'm going to have to create a name for this one now. This would come under the title of Fiction Inventions, Delusional Fictional Inventions About Things, Toys That Are Real, where the information they say about these characters, toys, cartoon figures, whatever, is not true. Wow, there's, so that's a number 11 to my other list, just added just right there. Wow. Anyhow, so they have to be brought back. So they get, they get the extra hit points. They become more powerful. They kick ass. Um, then somehow in the game, you have to make them good again. Therefore, you'd lose their abilities. <laughs> that, that doesn't make sense. Maybe there's a special, maybe there is a special game that he's got a copy of. That's the rarest Pokemon game in existence. Maybe that's the black cartridge that JonTron found and um, went insane over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that makes sense. All right. So, I mean, you need to, I know, you know, people say, well, it sounds like you're against everything. I'm against everything that will put the soul of a child in jeopardy. Exactly, yes. Okay? If you're, gonna, if you're a born-again believer and you've got Harry Potter books in there, if you're not doing researches because you've got a ministry like the ministry we have, burn them things before they steal the souls of your children. And just okay. having them in your house, it brings the demonic presence, it brings the accursed thing into your home. Well... I have a confession to make. I don't just have the books. I've got VHS tapes. I've got the DVD collection and the Blu-ray collection. That's a lot of stuff to burn. Oh, don't forget your Harry Potter playing cards. <laughs> wow. Oh, dear. I am so influenced by the demonic because I have so much Harry Potter paraphernalia. And Coca-Cola cups and things. Hmm. Bugger. Unbelievable. Right, here's the part where he talks about his fictitious childhood that never ex happened, ever. So, now, when you were a young boy, you were being trained. I was being trained. To be a witch. Via Harry Potter books. Tell me about that. Well... The organization that my family belonged to was a very secret organization and everything was done by blood oath. In other words, she watched uh, Eyes Wide Shut by Stanley Kubrick and The Clockwork Orange and um, The Shining and got all his beliefs about secret societies through those movies. Yeah, hmm, true. Now this is going way back, and uh, I was chosen to be the son of Shiva, the Hindu god of destruction. But I, Hindu god of destruction? Yes. Who was that? Shiva. Shiva is one of the principal deities of Hinduism. He is the supreme being within Shiv Shaivism. Sorry, I can't pronounce that. One of the major traditions within contemporary Hinduism, Shiva is the destroyer of evil and transformer. Didn't this guy say the opposite? Uh, Hindu god of destruction? Yes. Who was that? The Hindu god of destruction. Well, I'm sorry that it never happened, but no, Shiva's not the god of destruction. Shiva is the god of destroyer of evil and the transformer. So you know nothing about Hinduism, even though you're an expert on the evils of Hinduism. Touche. Within the Trimurti, the Hindu trinity includes Brahma and Vishnu. They call him Christ, Vishnu, Buddha, Jehovah, our Lord. In Shaivism tradition, Shiva is the supreme being who creates, protects and transforms the universe. Wow, what a dude. In the tradition of Hinduism called Shaktism, the goddess or Devi 
is described as supreme, yet Shiva is revered along with Vishnu and Brahma. A goddess is stated to be the energy of creative power, Shakti of each with Pavati, Sati, the equal complementary partner of Shiva. He is one of the five equivalent deities in, oh, what a word, Panchayatana Puja of the smarter tradition of Hinduism. Okay, so maybe Wikipedia. Could it be that Wikipedia holds more facts about Hinduism than Dave Hunt, Dr. Henry Lewis, Carol Matriciana, and Johanna Michelson put together? Well, yeah. <laughs> okay. Wow. Wow. From the moment of my birth, my whole life was secret. My sisters that grew up with me, and then we were separated for many years, they had no idea of what was going on because they were never chosen. There was just something about me that the enemy knew that I would be devoted and dedicated to his cause. Shiva laid his hand on me and he said, Behold, my only begotten son in whom I am well pleased with. Hear him as you would hear me. Do to him what you would do to me. What you refuse him, you refuse me. Now say that you would not have gotten saved. We're going to find out how you did in a few minutes, but say you wouldn't have. What would have happened to you? Where would you have been? Okay. One of two things. One, I would have taken over, okay, on this earth and brought the different divisions of the occultic world at that time together in unity. And they, I would have laid the law down. Anyone that would not follow what I told them would have paid the price for not doing so. Mm. Okay. So I would have ordered, organized my father's kingdom, knowing that he would sit on the throne, but also believing that I was called to be a prince in his kingdom, a warrior for his kingdom. I was called to be a warrior prince. Yeah, I think that this is a point where there's definitely mental illness involved in these delusional... For somebody to say that... I mean, yeah, I know. I personally know three people that cannot tell the truth, and it's part of their mental illness. Um, this guy's got the same illness, even though he's claiming to be the world's authority on witchcraft and Hinduism. He's... Delusional. Completely delusional. Why people who represent Christ on earth let delusional people spout this crap? It's for, yeah, it's for viewers. It's for money. Okay, I understand. They're only concerned about the viewing, the advertising, the money, running a television station. They don't care if anything's true or not. Right, yo, know, then, uh, the last and the hardest one to do, Glenn Hobbs. Uh, this is a guy that I believed was a true Satanist long after I got out of the believing in the ex-Satanists that are now Christians rubbish. Um, I still held on to the fact, fact, the fiction, that this guy was a true Satanist. Um, because he had a personal experience that I had, so we shared a similar bond, I guess even though it's through a videotape, I don't know the psychological issues of that. So I'm finally letting him go today, so this is the hardest one of the bunch. A while ago I ran across Glenn Hobbs, who made the rounds in the twilight years of a satanic panic claiming that he had totally been a Satanist who had done satanic things there before being converted to true Christianity. I want to show you today how Glenn Hobbs' claim line up with our checklist of for the cult of before stories and what happens to those of the people after their gravy train jumps the rails for good. We're going to see a lot more of these people as Christianity continues to decline and I want us prepared for them. 
that's what I'm about to get into. Wow. Cool. Just want just want to let you know that Bill Snivlin is still going today in 20. Actually, some of them, some of these dudes are still going today in 2018. Um, I don't know how they've been debunked so many times, but they've still got a cult following. There are still people that believe that everything they said were true, and basically, I kind of perpetuated that myself. <laughs> um, so why? I don't know why I don't believe that people, well, I mean, I kind of gave up believing in this stuff a decade ago, but there are still people that buy into it today, so, crazy! Right, my, uh, this is from Halloween Trick or Treat. My involvement in the satanic worship was, I was involved in it as a child. Of course, I was a generally, gener, generational Satanist, I can't read. What they call a general Satanist. What that means is that my family was involved in it and their family before them. Now my earliest rememberings of Halloween and some of these things that were involved was it was a very dark time for me as a child. It was something that um I didn't enjoy. A group called Jeremiah Films of whom I invested a lot of money purchasing everything I could obtain from them back in the day. Dave Hunt, Carol, Matricia, and Chuck Swindell, Chuck Smith. I've forgotten his name, sorry, it doesn't matter. A group called Jeremiah Films put out a video in 1991 called Halloween Trick or Treat as part of their Pagan Invasion series, which I had the whole collection of. There's six. Is there six in the series? Yeah. The video was simply intended to get Christians all super excited and scared about Halloween through fanciful reenactments and blatant liars talking about their testimonies. I wrote about this video at greater length last Halloween. Oh, I might, I might read that when I finish this. But I knew I'd want to circle back to the guy we're discussing today, because this is the video. I think this is the same video where Dave Hunt finds a pair of nappies. Is it Dave or Chuck? I can't remember which one. Finds a pair of, of nappies in a, clay, in a cave to prove that human sacrifice takes place every Halloween. Right, this video features an interview with a fellow named Glenn Hobbs who claimed a standard issue satanic panic, past and Satanism, child abuse, ritual sacrificing, sacrifice, horrifying abuse of all kinds, which he relates in a complete monotone. He also appeared in another movie from Jeremiah Films, 1989's Devil Worship. There's one I never owned. <gasps> no, don't bother tracking it down. Don't. Naughty. This time without the splotchy beard. Oh, he must have felt so excited to be put up alongside such satanic panic luminaries as totally ex totally a witch Doreen Irvine and ex totally a Freemason Bill Snivlin. Maybe he even dreamed of becoming another ex totally a Satanist like Mike Wonky by parlaying his totally dark and nefarious past into a big-time preaching career. That was not to be, however, the game was already finished in 1989. The players had just hadn't realised it quite yet. The pulling report came out in 1990, laying waste to all the rumours Christians spread and enjoyed about Dungeons and Dragons type role-playing games. Then in 1991, Mike Warnke's Fake testimony was debunked hard enough that it made him both that it made both him and all his imitators look like complete con jobs. In 1994, a 1994 piece from Washington Post would only have hurried along this cottage industry's demise as well. But by then, we're just talking about a cleanup on old 666. The inestimable Kirk. Kahulane covered the Halloween video back in 2002, including a lengthy and, one might add, humiliating debunk of everything Hobbs claimed in his interview. But by 2002, our boy's career as a satanic panicker had long disappeared from the rearview mirror. Ultimately, the evidence suggests that Glenn Hobbs just didn't enter the game early enough to build a name and following, and are following before the game ended, Mike Wonky and the rest have maintained small niche careers. Yeah, I just said that. Hobbs never got a, that big though. 
and you can download the video which I've done because I can't transfer couldn't be bothered transferring the videotape to the hard drive but most of these are all on YouTube now anyway um, the cult of the four stories a long time ago I wrote about the cult of the four stories as a term for Christians who get really really into conversion narratives featuring outlandish elements and miracles the more outrageous and the pre-conversion past the more excited his fan base gets but by some token they never actually ask for evidence for the claims made in these testimonies because we're taught not to ask questions we're taught not to ask for evidence we're just expected to believe the speaker because he's up there on the stage they literally don't care if anyone dares to try and ask for evidence or it goes so far as to debunk the claims made by 100% made in these 100% made up fake testimonies these Christians get angry at the person who has cast doubt upon their idolized stories yes that was me a decade ago or more 1994 95 mind you Harry Potter came out uh, yeah, still being affected in 2000 18 years ago okay the most popular of his stories all shared very similar elements would hear a claimed parson, whatever was the current big bogeyman du jour of fundagelic sorry, I know that's supposed to be evangelicalism. Fundagelicanism. This past would be completely alien and foreign to audience his own experiences and reality. Lurid and even titillating claims about the past didn't match up at all with the real situations and groups that the claimant said they'd belong to but which match perfectly what funding evangelicals thought these situations and groups were like there'd be huge big miraculous a huge big miraculous event at the time of conversion <coughs> pardon me it'd be followed by quite a lot of pontificating about the great and glamorous danger that the central situation group still represents to Christians today. Lastly, the testimony would feature how incredibly happy and fulfilled the claimant is today and how perfect his or her life is now. Or subverted slightly, life's really rough, but the claimant is really happy despite that hardship because of Jesus. Anytime whatsoever you see a big dramatic testimony featuring these elements, you're very likely looking at the liar for Jesus, seeking status, and power by tickling Christians' ears. I want you to. I want to point out that I have seen Johnny Lee Clary live. Um, he was a grand wizard of the KKK, and um, you know he's he's not one of these fake guys. He's a real guy. Um, you see him on on um, oh, Jerry Springer or something as a KKK. Um, you know, with that with with white hat hoodie, the whole gear on. Grandmaster there, he's so proud of the KKK. And then, like, years later, he goes back on another show and he shakes hands with the guy that he was threatening to attack and all this. So that's a great true story. But these, these fake ones are kind of have the same momentum as somebody who used to be ultra bad and are now ultra good even though as it turns out none of the ultra goods are telling the truth about their past at all in any way shape or form so we'll finish to we'll finish this uh, with the my point as to why I'm personally um, calling these guys out Man and woman, whatever. Okay, yep. Okay, so I just want to finish off with um, what I have an issue with. This this theory, this belief, this delusion that the church, people have walked away from the church over the years because Harry Potter's drawn people away from the church, Pokemon's drawn people away from the church, Ouija boards and Halloween and My Little Pony and... 
all that have drawn people away from God and into the occult. None of that is true. None of that is true. It's all delusional nonsense. Um, the What has happened is that people have basically looked at this, what the church is saying, and, and thinking, you guys are nuts. The church is just completely gaga. It's, it's stuck in the Middle Ages in, in, in this mentality that everything is demonic. Rock music and we, well, Ouija boards, I'm still not sure about, well, I don't care. You know, pentagrams and, and fortune telling and horoscopes and acupuncture and yoga and all this. It's all demonic. So people have basically just looked at the church babbling on about being anti-everything and just saw just like I don't want to even, I don't want to have a, any part of that nonsense I don't want to have any part of of people who are just so anti everything <laughs> that's what's really happened and the majority of people didn't the majority of the kids didn't go into witchcraft. They went out way from the church. And, and now, you know, they've either become atheists or agnostics or whatever. And just like they don't believe they're irreligious now. They don't believe in our religion. They don't believe in our God of any kind. And so for you to say that um, they've gone from Christianity to witchcraft, no, because they don't believe in a spiritual realm. So when they read a Harry Potter book, they go to buy a cauldron and and a magic wand and a spell book, and the magic doesn't work. So all your theories of why people have walked away from the church are wrong. Um, the damage has been done from within the church letting people preach the most stupidest nonsense from the pulpit in the name of Jesus Christ. Perfect time for a plane to fly over. Um, preaching stupid things like the, the earth is flat and there's 200 verses to prove the earth is flat and that if you read any version of the Bible apart from the King James Bible, then you lose your salvation. If you, if you really are truly a Christian and you're female, you shouldn't wear, wear makeup. You shouldn't wear pants in church. People are just looking at this nonsense and going, "I'm out of here. Goodbye." You know, um, you know, and and like 59 percent of people. They did a poll and it's like 59% of people aren't going to church anymore because of the church's stance on the whole homosexual LGBTQI agenda, <laughs> they call it. You know, the, the hidden agenda for the, the queer community to take over the world for Lucifer. Um, <laughs> they're just seeing how stupid it all is. I think that, that, that's the problem. I mean... With the, the Catholic Church, you have a Pope, you have a leader. And in the Protestant Church, where most of this crap, come, all of this crap comes from, there's no managing director boards over all the churches in the Western world. Because, again, I don't believe common African or Chinese Christian would have ever heard of the Flat Earth society or, or any of that nonsense unless a westerner I, I know Americans have gone to preach in Uganda about the evils of homosexuality and stuff like that has happened but you know if it's not I mean some dude in the middle of a of, of, a, of a desert doesn't know who Harry Potter is so none of that nonsense has emigrated ex been exported to to certain countries, uh, especially Russia. I mean, they've been saved from that crap, no nonsense. Um, so, yeah, that's the problem. There's no 
organization like the Vatican in the Protestant Church where people are accountable to a type of leadership. And I know that they're supposed to be accountable to Jesus Christ, but none of them are. They're supposed to be accountable to the Holy Spirit, but none of them are. They don't listen to Christ. They don't listen to the Holy Spirit. If they did, then the, the Jesus would be tapping on their shoulders going, hey, you know, you, you, do you realize you're actually teaching nonsense? Gibberish, pathetic, incoherent, babbling nonsense? And they'd go, oh, you mean the earth is round and it goes around the sun? <laughs> oh, why didn't you tell me that? You know, it's just, they're not accountable to a governing body. They're not accountable to anybody. They could preach whatever they want. Now, don't forget that people outside of Christianity look at people like the Whisperer of Baptist Church and include them as true believing, Bible believing Christians. And so you could have a church where you worship a fence. A literal fence and, and, and like that's your denomination and then you just run with it and like nobody's going to stop you. I mean, you know, if you want to teach that, that Jesus was an alien being from Vulcan and what the hell did you do that for? Sorry, Nanu Lalu. <laughs> Live long and prosper. Um, then you can because... Don't worry, they're just laying down the chemtrails at the moment. Um, so that they've cottoned on to the fact that I'm starting to not believe in conspiracy nonsense anymore. So they're, they're making sure that they're, they're um, leaving all the, the chemtrails with the magnesium or whatever it is. And so I get brainwashed all over again. <laughs> so that's, yeah, that's the, that's my problem with, with this not just the ex satanists who never were, but just the crap about Harry Potter, Pokemon, anything on TV, He-Man, Masters of the Universe, Ant-Man, Wasp, Captain America, Thor, The Avengers. There's, I mean, like I said before, you can't stop this garbage. There's people up in arms against the Avengers Infinity Wars and... and just anything, everything, everything is evil. And I'm sick of that mentality. I'm just sick of it. And I'm walking away. And I, I just watched a, um, uh, this other guy that has is going through a similar issue that I'm going through. And, um, you know, Kurt, I, I really agree with this guy. It's like God for me is is a presence that I can feel, that I can communicate with. And again, there's no scientific reasoning or logic or whatever to back it up. It's all emotional. It's a feeling. Things happen in my life that happen in a way that seems supernatural to me. And I believe that and I buy into that and I believe I have a relationship with a with a supreme being you know so I'm not walk well I'm walking away from stupid Christianity I believe in a being called Yahweh does he have anything to do with the Christian Bible or what I don't know at this point I I'm really making a diary of the way that I've changed my life from being told what to think, how to think, and why I should think it, to making my own decisions. And that's really scary. It is, in fact, really, really scary. It's, it makes me feel uncomfortable. But I do have a group of friends around me that are helping me through this. And if it wasn't for them, you know, I couldn't do this. I would freak out. I'd go, you question that God exists? Uh, you know, so that's what I'm in the process of doing. So the, all these episodes that I'm making, I'm 
really, really questioning, I wouldn't say my faith, because my faith isn't going to change. I was hit by a car when I was seven years old, and I had my head split open, and I should be dead, and I believe it was a miracle. I believe an angelic being saved me from that, and there's no proof that it ever happened, but that's what I believe. But, you know, I just, I'm pulling away from all the gibberish, garbage, nonsense that I was told about. Anyway, so tune in next episode when we're going to look in depth at the stupidity of um, hating not only Harry Potter, but also the Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, and of course the most one that affected me the most and hit me the hardest because I grew up on it. The longest is the Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis. They are preaching that that's evil now. So we're going to go into detail about that. It is just, it really is stupid and I can't really do these series without laughing anymore. It's just, it's so stupid to me now. Bye. Do 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 do. Rainbow flying on.